On today's show, we're going to talk about something that really rocks from Toyota, and that is their concept known as the ROX. Uh, it's pretty badass. It's based around the Land Cruiser Prado 250, and I think you're going to like this thing. But first, before we get into this conversation, let's uh, go ahead and smash that like button for me if you have not yet, and if you're new to the channel and just seeing this, go ahead and give me a subscription because we do all kinds of fun things with off-road vehicles, especially. We cover the industry as a whole. But I really like off-road SUVs like what we're about to see here. So let's get into this news article. And this is a press release from Toyota. So Toyota Land Cruiser concept shoots for the stars with an open air build. And boy, does it ever because this thing here, it brings back some vibes of the FJ. Definitely those those fenders, everything about this thing kind of reminds me of that. The mirrors, obviously, we've talked about that a ton of how that's kind of uh, into Toyota's heritage with that style of mirror. This thing, just look at this thing. Now, it's on 37-inch tires. It's big. It's it's just muscular, and it looks really cool. And I have to say, Toyota, build this. Just build this thing. Now, you know, the open-air top that you're going to see with the canvas roof and all that, I understand you're not going to build that part of it. But I think there's a way that you can take these doors and all this stuff and have a lot of fun with it. But let's get into the news article, and then we'll go deeper into my thoughts about this. Toyota leans into the Land Cruiser's past with an open-air concept designed for the ultimate outdoor adventure. So we're going to see this thing in Las Vegas at the SEMA show, and I'll be there covering the event. So I'm definitely going to be at Toyota's uh, release of this thing because very pumped about this. But Toyota Motors uh, North America captivated the automotive world with the debut of the innovative Land Cruiser ROX Rocks or the Recreational Open Experience concept at the SEMA show in Las Vegas. The ambitious concept spearheaded by Toyota's North American Design Studio, Culty Design Research in Ann Arbor, Michigan, reimagined the iconic open top Land Cruisers of the past for a new era of outdoor adventures. And if you didn't know, the first gen of the Land Cruiser was basically like a Jeep. It had a, it was, it was the Japanese version of a Jeep, basically. And it, it was very, very cool and very still desirable to today. Colty was a part of the global design team that helped create the 2024 Land Cruiser 250. Kevin Hunter, president of Colty Designs and Research, shared the purpose of this concept. We asked ourselves, how could we make an even more exciting experience for our Land Cruiser enthusiasts? But from real product perspective, and I think they've done that quite well. Uh, they wanted to use the Land Cruiser 250 as a base, so they modified the uh, body to open it up, expanding the usability function and overall fun experience of the vehicle, and that they have. So let's get into some photos because I have thoughts about this thing. I have thoughts that I think could uh, actually come to fruition and some that, well, maybe won't. So let's look at this. All right, there is the front of this vehicle, and there's a lot to like about this thing. Some about the stature of this. Of course, those wide fenders help help make it look beefy and brawny and off-roady as well. But something about the stature of this vehicle just reminds me of the FJ Cruiser quite a lot. Now, obviously, the mirrors, they they definitely are those style of mirrors, and that's something Toyota's played with with the heritage of. They play little little games with their heritage, and they like to bring in just small touches that, uh, that kind of make you harken back to the better days. And um, start with the front of this thing. This bumper... If some manufacturer does not figure out a way to stamp this thing and make it right now, they're silly because I think you would sell a lot of them and they're going to be expensive. You're talking a $3,000, $3,500 price for that bumper. Somebody build it. Somebody with their, their Land Cruiser is going to want that. And uh, I, I'm all for that. Please do that. But uh, as we look at this thing, uh, the big beefy tow hooks on this, I mean, obviously, this a lot of this is concept stuff, the way they've done their uh, their shackle there for the uh, the winch. That's all um, definitely, uh, you know, they're just playing with design there. But I love the fact how they've brought in the square lights, and they look like the uh, – what is it, diodynamic or whatever they're called, their lights there. But I love the square that they've used. It just plays in all of the square of the, the vehicle, man. And a lot of people like that, just that rugged look to that. And I think they've done an excellent job there. Now, they've brought that all the way into the roof. As you can see right there, there's definitely more of those lights. But what are they doing with the pillars here? This is some kind of interesting support. I don't know what's going on there. And it's on both sides. As you can see, both sides of the vehicle has that. Looks fantastic, man. And, of course, Big old, look at those big old 37-inch tires on that thing. That I mean, it just it just fits. Everything about this just fits and works. And I Toyota always does their concepts very nice. Now, I want to get into the doors of this thing just a little bit because they're definitely having some fun here. I think they definitely tube doors of Jeeps, um, the Broncos, stuff like that. That it's it's their way of doing that. Now, 
if they were to build something like this, it definitely is going to take on the the Bronco Raptors, and I think like the 392 and whatever the Jeep's going to have a a you know some other 392 they're going to build something in line with that. Obviously, it won't be the big V8, but they want to play in that territory, and this is definitely designed to take on. The, the like the Raptor version of the Bronco or, you know, once again, the, the 392, the more expensive version of those vehicles. This thing is definitely kind of hints at like, hey, we can uh, we can play in that category as well, because look at the way that bumper is. You're going to get all look at the approach angle. You're going to get all kinds of great approach angle with this thing. Big old skid up front there. One thing I really do like is the rocks right here. Look how they've played into the Land Cruiser badging, the old style badging how they've played into that. That looks really cool. The color on this thing, Toyota, have some fun with colors, man. I love that color of this. The two-tone of that looks great, and it's something they're doing right now. They're doing a lot of two-tone colors um, on the trucks especially. But we look there, you got these big old 37-inch BF Goodrich tires. These wheels, oh, my God, these wheels are so fantastic. Now, are they street legal? The way, is it more just design than anything? I don't know. But if you can build that wheel with something like this, oh, wow. You can see rock rails under this. I think if I remember right, and I could be wrong, that the rear axle is under a from a Tundra on this thing. Of course, that reminds me of what uh, you know Ford did with their Raptor Bronco. They put a Dana 60 under this thing. So is, is Toyota hinting at what they can do? I don't know. I don't know, but I definitely like this. Now, these fenders on this thing were all 3D printed. They talk about it in some videos they've dropped about how they uh, they did that. And I love it. I I mean, build this Toyota. Build this. And if you do build this, I understand it's going to be expensive. There's a market that's itching for this, and they're willing to throw out the cash for something like this. Trust me. They want this. Definitely, they want this. And as we kind of make our way to the back of this, uh, the Molly panels in the back there, you can kind of see the Rotopack sticking out there. And I love, you'll see in just a minute, I love how they have that integrated in. But there's a way that you can do this, and you can have a cap over this. There's definitely a way that you can do this. Of course, you know, some of this structurally they needed the, for the body. They needed something to structurally go back there to keep the body from warping a little bit. And it, it reminds me, too, of like what Isuzu did with the Amigos back in the day. You can if if they can't do a full removable top because I don't think that the any of the Japanese brands or the import brands anymore really want to get into that kind of styling because it's complicated and it's complicated to build. But definitely you can if you can just do the removable roof of the back, I think that's doable and I think it's uh it's fairly doable and still makes safety standards. Now let's see what else we got here for photos. So kind of a little bit more of an action shot there. The back of this thing. Uh, I, one thing I'm not a fan of, I don't like the way they've integrated the, uh, the spare tire in this thing. I would almost say rather not put the spare tire on there, but I get it. You want that off-road look. This is a concept vehicle. They were trying to get eyeballs on this. So definitely, uh, definitely like, uh, like how they've styled it and how they've displayed it. I just, I'm not sure about the, uh, the big bar sticking out here like that. Of course, one reason they did that is because, well, it's a fold down tailgate. Now you can see the led back here looks great. All the square lights about this, it just, it, it reminds you of that, what we thought in the 80s, what the future of vehicles would look like. This just reminds me of that, and I'm so pumped about this thing. Once again, just big, brawny stance. Just, just so exciting. And I've done time with the current Land Cruiser. I've got a video that me and Kelly did a couple weeks ago where I, I like the Land Cruiser, but I just kind of find it to be kind of bland. Now, I know with 4Runner, they're they're trying to inch into the let's be a little bit more exciting. But I think if they they do touches like this to the Land Cruiser, make it exciting. Make it make me want to really drop a lot of money down for this. But you can see a rolling shot right here. Once again, you know, I'd be curious if there's actually a winch back there. A lot of times in these concept vehicles, there's not. I'd be curious, how did they make it fit in there for one thing? But on the outside, we do look like we have a winch looking there uh big led bars up here you can see i like how they've got like the these are running their own probably switch of some sort there so that's kind of interesting uh looks great fantastic and uh once again there's that bumper somebody needs to build something like that asap great design on that and one of the things that i really like is, is they didn't just place this on some rocks they had to literally drive this thing up there of course the land cruiser is very capable we know that of course 37 inch tires doesn't hurt to have that under either but a lot of times concept vehicles you don't risk them you uh you're they're your babies you kind of take care of them they look the part but they don't act the part i love that toyota's making this thing literally act the part now let's uh oh god that, that action shot there once again this is this shot right here 
makes people go, I want to buy this. I want to go try to get my own action shots with something that just looks so badass like that. But there you can see the uh, see the uh, the rear of it there. Once again, you can see I know what they've they've had to do with the hitch trying to make it work. I get it. I think everything looks great except this right here. I'm sure if they really wanted to put something like this in production, they definitely could. But as we open this thing up, look at this little, you know, everybody, especially in Bronco community, wants a truck. <laughs> they've done it for us. Look at this thing. Just looks so cool. I love how they've done the seats. Look at that. They've got little handles that you can hold on to. And I don't think you'd want to be riding down the road, but uh, definitely probably grab handles to help sit up on that. Just looks cool. I can I can just see it and uh, doing some adventures camping and you got a nice place to eat your dinner right there or something. But look how they've uh, all the Molly panels in here. They've integrated the Roto packs again. That looks great. Now, is it practical? Probably not, but it looks really cool. Now, the interior. All this brown baseball style leather. Look at how they've embroidered that or embossed it into their Looks great in that leather. These seats, oh wow, give you those definitely some kind of I don't know westerny outdoors explorer vibes in this thing. Uh, I love the uh, the little bullet holder here. The little uh, yeah, you can it looks like it's the old west. Like we we can put our rifle shells in there. That looks fun and exciting. Everything about this vehicle, I'm telling you, is a home run. And I think you just build this now. Let's talk about pricing of this thing, because if you were to build something like this, it's going to be expensive. And I hinted earlier that it's going to be kind of in that Raptor pricing. People are willing to buy that Raptor at that price point. Toyota, come on. They're willing to buy stuff and, and pay a lot of money for it. Now, this wouldn't be a limited production run, because if you get into stamping of all the stuff, it's got to be cost. You know, you got to make it worth it. But if you uh, you sell this thing eighty five, ninety thousand dollars, I'm telling you, there is a market that is willing to pay for that. And I hate saying that because I just bought a Raptor at ninety thousand dollars, and uh, yeah, that hurts the checkbook. But I'm willing to pay to play. And I think for Toyota, this gives them something that's definitely in the vibes of Wrangler. It's definitely giving them some vibes of something that's uh, in the Bronco, and where there's money to be had companies want that money so in the comments below where are you at with this thing are you interested in this concept we'll be in las vegas for this sema show and uh we're definitely going to be at the toyota booth when they launch this thing try to get all the cool photos i'll ask all the questions that i can about this thing and see if we can get any kind of like hey is there any part of this that could be in production because i think they're hinting at what could be because we've seen it in the past trail hunter all the badging of trail hunter was on the concept the tundra concept they they dropped there there's all kinds of stuff that they've hinted in these concepts that sometimes do make it to production. And I think just build this and uh, I'll be I'll be throwing down money in a heartbeat. And uh, I have a feeling you might, too. So whether it be two wheel drive, four wheel drive or this badass rocks concept that I would love to drive. I don't care if they were just like, hey, take it off the booth. So I can get behind the wheel and drive this thing. It's been your all train nation. I'm your host, David Boyd. We're out. Peace, everybody. Love you all.